Right, well, first up is what we have to say is a big, massive Merry Christmas to everyone. So thank you for your support, it has been wonderful. And what we're going to give to most of you is a sneaky sort of free Christmas present, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah. We're going to give away, or we're going to show to the masses, we're going to stick it on YouTube, one of our live matches that we filmed. Yeah. Flipping heck, what are we on now? Probably I'll... back in 2020? It was a long time ago, Jay lad, wasn't it? Yeah, we're going to give you... 2021. Just... 2021, so we on for Richard. But anyway, one of ours, which is one of the, uh, the selection of members matches that we have on our members package. But it's just a nice, a nice thank you to everyone for your support, but also a little show taste you what you as well, isn't it, really? of what we do. You know what I mean, this isn't before now. We put some live matches out that have been what we're going to call them chaos versions of what we normally do for Every various matches. Every match I've seen to Blooming Films, chaos, Jay. Yes. <laughs> so the, this is just for you. Like it's going to be one of the matches that we've done properly. We've gone into detail about. And just to show you what our channel membership is all about. So obviously we have a whole lot more when it comes to members, instructional stuff, um, getting new guest appearances. As well, you know what I mean? Obviously the, the lights that we're doing with the lights of, well, we've done Bagger, Speedy, Michael Buckwall. We have um, many, many, many wonderful anglers oh, that yes. do things far better than what we do. But yeah, have a little look at this. Hope you enjoy it. And above all else, thank you for your support. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, folks. Right, we are back at yet another live match for you. Lovely lot, as Andy would say. And when it got wintry, I thought it was about time that we come to... I say everywhere's my favourite venue, but probably my favourite venue, and that's Tunnelbound Farm for some nearly winter F1 fishing. Do you know what I mean? It's flipping cold, it's 10 degrees, and yeah, it's, it's going to be really, really tricky, hard F1 fishing. But it's weird, it's, I'm saying F1, it's F1 fishing yet, but it's, I don't know what to do. I'm very confused. So it's going to be a right sort of strange day working out what's the best ways to fish. From what I've heard, it's fishing really, really tough. I think there was a match on, I've drawn on Club Pool. There was a match in here last week and 50 something pound won the lake. 40 odd pound was second. So today we're in with um, Top Pool and House Pool. I really, really did fancy drawing uh, House Pool. That's a much bigger stamp of F1s. That's where I wanted to be. But still, we got a, a decent peg. I've drawn peg 15, which I love this area. Yeah, not so much now. It very much changes this lake in the winter because it's probably uh, a bit unusual to the other lakes at Tunnel in that it's probably 50% carp, maybe not quite. 40% carp in this lake, a lot more carp than the other lakes, definitely. Um, so during the summer, mega, mega draw. Do you know what I mean? I've been lucky. I've actually I've qualified for Fisho twice off this peg. I don't know if you've this further down. It's always a really nice area that I like to draw because it suits what I do. Very good area for pellet fishing for carp during the summer. That said, today, I really, really don't know what mood it's going to be in. Yeah, we've got the... Um, you've got your original carp to catch. Whether they'll even feed, I have no idea whatsoever whether it's gone that cold that carp simply aren't feeding now and Dobbin's the way of catching them if you're on the fish. But that's not something I'm going to go down that route of today. I'm hoping it's not quite that cold or whether I'm going to be able to feed a bit. I mean, it might be a trickle, definitely not going crazy, but it might be, they might be feeding on bait. I mean, who knows? Uh, and to throw the spanner in the works as well, make things even more confusing, is that they've recently just stocked 500 uh, little fish in here. They put 500 little, I, I think they're F1s. I, I might be wrong. I think they're F1s and a few little carp. I'm not sure. They came out one of the stock ponds. Uh, they've just gone in this week which again, right throws a spanner in the works of me, just not knowing. Yeah, excuse me, I don't know if the shoulder shoaled up. I, I don't, it really is making it tricky for me to know what to do, whether to go down the, the soft pellet, um, ground baited roots, catch the little fish very, very quickly, whether to catch them short or whether to try and catch them long, I don't know. I mean, I've got to hopefully get it right at the start. I don't really know, I've got lots of options covered. Um, I've also got my hard pellet sort of approach in case there's carp feeding. And then thirdly, I've got a maggot approach as well, potential for, for the original bigger F1s that are in here. So I've got to almost split it down into three different groups of fish just to see what's feeding on the day, what I'm best targeting on the day, and as well as that during certain times of the day. So it's very likely that these stockies, if they are here, I'm going to catch them immediately, kick their bums a little bit, I'll stop catching them, and then the bigger fish will I'll have a feed after that. Hopefully, that's the type of match I'm hoping for. Whether that's what will materialise, I have not got a clue what's going to happen today. But to definitely erring on the side of caution, to having that £50 target weight, which, say, that won the late last week. If I catch £50, it's definitely not going to do any good in the match. I think you're going to need £70 to maybe £80 to win. Definitely on house pool. I fancy that sort of weight today. I think there's I think there's 12 people on each lake. I think there's 36 on the match today. I think there's 12 on house here and top pool, which it's a lot of room on house. So they, they really have got a chance of catching some fish there. But yeah, for, for me, it's just going to be a nice, a very typical 
early winter sort of thing. I mean, where I can do whatever I want, I can feed the right baits, hopefully. I just need to work out whether fish are feeding or not and be very, very, very careful. Show you a few ways how to attract fish into, into my peg, if that's what's happening. So a quick breakdown, what I want to do, so we've got about 10 minutes left. I just want to get me nets in in a second. But what I've gone with, I've gone with three different options of rigs, pretty much. Yeah, firstly, I've got my soft pellet rigs. That's what I'm going to start with. And then my conventional wire stem floats, very heavy shotting down the bottom end. I'm actually fishing a 414s in about that. Probably about three foot, which is just on the edge of the weeds. So I find them, them stockies often like cover, so I'm, I'm going to the cover hoping that's my best option. Um, so very, very heavy shotted, very positive. Get straight down, get a bite off these little fish. I mean, that's me, me attack for soft pellets. I'm also going to do the same thing in the edge. So pretty much wherever my cover is, both in the edge and across, I'm going with soft pellets, hoping that these little fish are, are residing in them. Um, I've got my maggot rigs, me standard maggot rigs for down the middle. I've just got one 4B14s. It's about four and a half foot and I've got a bit of wind. So I've just set up one nice positive 4B14s with um, a couple of droppers and then a, sl a slight spread bulk above it just to get it down quick so I'm not messing about. It's quite a lot of silver fish in here. So I don't want to be messing about catching roach and rod and little tiny fish. I just want to catch proper fish when they feed on it. And lastly, I've got two or three hard pellet rigs ready that again, whether they'll be right or not, I'm not sure I've set up. Um, two 4B12s and one 4B10 carbon slims, all with 1.5 mil bristles, so quite delicate, um, all with fairly strung out shotting, so they can, they, they can see it's gonna be a, a visibility thing where the fish are quite often taking your bait because they're seeing it for, and I've been coaching twice this week and they've definitely been intercepting a lot of bait on the way down and not too happy going on the piles and feeding. So all three of my hard pellet rigs are leading towards that sort of style of rig where I can lay my rig in lots and lots, hopefully catch a few fish on the settle. But I'll break down my rigs a little bit more when we go into it. So I think I've got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to get my nets in just to let me peg settle as quickly as possible. I think that's a, a big thing in the winter is get them nets in so carefully because the fish are so spooky. Definitely at this time of year, they will go out your peg and not come back so easily. So with a bit of room to me right, I've got to be careful. I don't lose the fish down there. So I want to tread carefully. Hopefully coax them back later on if they're willing to feed and we might catch a few if we take things very delicate. But that's the plan, let's get sorted and it's nearly time to so go. A couple of minutes before we start, we'll have a little rundown of what I'm planning or what I'm hoping will happen. But like I say, I've got these stockies that are very much on my mind and with that 50 pound, it, it may be a quick route to 10 or 20 pound in the first hour. So stockies are very, the, the norm with them for new fish, you're straight in, what a bung and then gone like a light switch they just stop feeding or you caught them all or who knows but they stop feeding very quickly so that's going to be me my plan it's what i'm going to start on i'm going to go straight over to the far bank where i'm getting let me have a look at my rig i'm getting three foot yeah it's a nice perfect sort of starting depth for me for f1s this time of year when you've got that sort of eight ten twelve degrees so three foot's a lovely depth that they so often want to feed in and so that's going to be me my starting area to catch these stockies say so next to a weed bed is hopefully safer. I may have made a mistake because it could possibly be a case of top kit and one could be a better way if there's a lot of them. But I'm not really feeling that sort of thing. There's not millions gone in. And I think by going to the weed bed, I've got a chance of catching some normal fish, some bigger fish as well, or instead if the stockies aren't here. So I'm sort of going with the safe option rather than risking it and trying to catch one a chuck short. So it'll be interesting to see what everyone else does um, in regards to targeting them little fish if they're feeding or not. To, after that, what you've got to be very careful of at this time of year, similar to uh, the past couple of videos that we've done, is that you're very, um, there's a very good likelihood it's going to be rubbish to start with if them stockies aren't feeding. So I've got to be very careful, not feed too many lines to begin with, and let the fish come to me and gain confidence. So the last thing, the same as I talk about all the time, is the last thing I want to be doing is putting lines here, there and everywhere, early on in the match when there's not many fish competing, split me fish and stopping them arriving on mass late on and it stops me having that good run, which was so dependable on at this time of year. We really do need that good last hour on whatever line turns out to be the best. So I'd say the, the, definitely the stockies are my starting point. I'm hoping to catch a few of them on that. So after that, I'm planning on fishing some hard pellets in, in either shallower water or deeper water, depending what happens on this three foot line. I've got probably two, two and a bit foot tight to the, tight to the back there, which at this time of year, you'd normally feel it was a weird thing. It'd be too shallow. But because there's such dense vegetation on this lake, and I think it's quite undercut on the island as well, you often get fish, even in the coldest weather, tight in that really shallow water. So I've got a rig for it just in case. So whether it works or not, who knows? 
uh, and my other two pallet lines are like the bottom of the slope where I'm getting about four foot, but it's a long, long way from the bank. So I've, I've kept that separate from my far bank lines. I've put that right down the peg over here. And then I've got two lines in about three and a half foot when I'm hoping to tap a few hard four mills and they're going to be me. They're my line that I'm planning on spending most of my day on. I mean, that's where I'm most likely to catch the fish that I'm hoping to catch, an odd carp uh, and some proper F1s maybe. So that's where I've got my nice 4 b 12 strung out rigs when I'm planning on tapping some pellets, but say none of them will be fed until I fish them. So the only line that will ever get fed in advance is either my edges, but I won't feed them for at least the first couple of hours today, uh, and my middle line as well that I'll probably feed. I'll see what's going on. If some lads start catching an odd fish early on, I might feed it early. If not, I'll wait till the last couple of hours till any, uh, any maggots are introduced down that middle, just to make sure I don't fill my peg with little fish and I make sure I get a good run because there's not too much bait on the bottom. So I think we've got a couple of minutes left. I'm going to just sort my rig out, get my bait on. And it is time to go with a bit of luck. Them stockies will be in residence. Right, Mr. Stockies, please be in residence. So while we've been setting up, we've seen an odd fish, but nothing that I'd say that they were them little ones. There's like an odd decent fish been topping here and there. So I'm going to start right in this wobbly far bank here. Tight in as I can get. And I've fed to begin with some, um, some micros with some ground bait. Yeah, big fan of feeding a little bit of ground bait. I need to sort that float out though. I was sitting sexy a minute ago. What's going on with that now? That was sitting beautifully. Might have lost a shot on that. Twelve AAs. See this? Everyone's gone for the same thing. Everyone's gone for the across option pretty much. So it'll be good to see if that's where the fish want to be. I mean, no one's gone on the top kit and see if they're really short option, which I'm quite glad about it would have annoyed me if someone had caught doing that because I've not got it ready. It's about the only thing I've not got ready today. I'm proper keen today. Proper keen. So I'm not liking my float. This is the first match I've put a wire float on today. I forgot just how moody wire stems are compared to nice proper carbon stem. Heavier bristle floats. I do feel like things are happening now. I'm sure that moved then, that cast. Let's give it a couple of micros. Yeah, I'm sure that moved. As if there was a, a fish in the peg. But because my float's so high, I didn't see it. Well, it's mega important when you're fishing in this way. So with a, a mega tight trap, is to make sure your float's nice, heavy, positive, with big shotting down the bottom end. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, I really don't like that. Yeah, don't include that bit, Rich. That looks horrendous. Um, what am I on about? Yeah, nice, heavy shot down to keep it stable, but it shows you everything. If any of these fish knock your shot or just move about in your peg, because you're fishing so accurately, or trying to, depending on the wind. Let's pull it there, that's sexy now, it's beautiful. Um, you see what's going on, you see when there's a fish in your peg, rather than just seeing a bite. Because my rig is so heavy at the bottom end, it like shows everything up. So I know that if they're there and I just need to feed differently to catch them, my rig tells me that. So at minute, it ain't moving. So I've just gone with a nice a formal expander to start with. So I'm a big fan of fishing little expanders as well, little two and a half or three milli expanders. I'm big, 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 big fan of when feeding micro pellets just because it, it blends in a bit closer. But we'll see. I don't feel that we're quite at that point yet where I've got to be as 
as refined as that, I might be wrong, but it doesn't feel quite like that sort of fishing just yet. Let's see, we'll see. I'll start on this little trap, so we've not had an immediate response, which is not worrying just yet. 15 minutes in, then I'll be flapping. 10 or 15 minutes on this line, see what goes on. So the only thing I am today, my only my little moan I'm going to have, is I can't really see anyone because I'm sat the way I am and the wind's going that way and that's where, oh, that's where my day is. I can't really see what everyone's doing. I've got to physically look round that way. I've got to stop looking at me float and what I'm doing and pay a little bit of attention to them up there. Just to see if any fish are getting caught or not. So I've got one chap opposite, I can keep an eye on him. He's, he's the one that started short. So it'll be interesting to see if he catches a fish. So there's definitely been, there been signs of fish all in the middle. Yeah, everything that's either moved or quite a few bubbles that we've seen coming up before we started, just nice little single fizzy type bubbles. They've all been in the middle or in the deeper water anyway. That's where the, all the signs of fish have been. See another one there, a little single bubble coming off. A very good sign that they're actual fish when you get just a single blip. Very, very often they are fish. Which say, definitely wouldn't surprise me. That seems to have been the pattern all week for me. I've been coaching all this week. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we've been coaching all this week. And everything's been in deeper water. And that is a stocky as well, that. Well, that's a very little stocky. I was expecting a bit more substance than, on, than that. Mmm, not good. But we haven't blanked. Little diddy one, so what are they? Three to a pound? Need them to be a bit bigger than that. I definitely need them to be a bit more substantial than that to be worthwhile. So that was feeding a little. Little nugget of ground bait and some micros. Whenever stockies are involved, for me, ground bait is always the one. They love a little bit of ground bait and they feed so much nicer over a bit of ground bait than they do over micros sometimes. I think they just feed for a bit longer on it. It just seems to get them in your peg and you get a bite off them a little bit faster when you've got all the, the little bits of that. So my ground bait's just some milled micros seems to get them in your peg a little bit faster than just micros on their own. So we still keep it very deliberate, although we've had one. It's not a, a given that they're all going to be in my peg. So I've got to be careful feeding that bait with that gusty wind. So it's so important not to rush your bait in and feed it in the wrong place. I need it to be right in that little accurate area that I've got every single time. Yeah, I was hoping they were going to be a bit bigger than that. That's... Wind, wind, wind. Not disappointing, it's nice to get a bite, but... It'd have been nice if they were like two to a pound or even ten ounce a piece. That would have been mega, then it'd have been like really, really worth fishing for them sort of, whereas fish that big, you need to catch a hell of a lot of them to catch 50 pound. I mean, I'm not gonna catch them fishing for them like this. It's too, it's too perfect, it's too accurate to catch a weight yeah, of little fish like that. Oh, come on, the wind. It's come out of nowhere, that. Got another indication that cast. See what's happening. Shall plod along for a little bit. So I'm happy just catching a few fish until I see some different fish getting caught. Yeah, it's no use trying to make something happen, it'll be nice. If if the stockies didn't exist, I'd be sort of looking at catching. That wasn't a stocky. Did that look a bit bigger? That was like a, a better fish foul up maybe. Yeah, that felt a little bit different then. Nothing's still sound with that. I'm gonna put a lid on. 
put a little pinch of 10 micros in instead. Yeah, that didn't feel tiny, that, that felt like an, an F1 or it wasn't as little as that first one was. So although it's cold, the one comment I will make that it probably bite me in the bum and make me look a wally, but it's been like consistent all week. Yeah, or the last, definitely the last four days have been quite similar weather, do you know what I mean? It's been uh, identical days almost, quite a bit of rain. But it's been that sort of 12 degrees in the day, 10 to 12 degrees in the day, dropping down to about seven or eight at night, which as long as it's consistent, you can have a little feed at this time of year. Do you know what I mean? They're still decent temperatures. The water's still around 10 degrees. It's not gone too cold yet, so they're still fairly happy to have a go as long as everything's right. So we've just come off the back of a spell with like dead high pressure and, and warm sunshine a couple of weeks ago. And because of the contrast in weather, because it was so different between day and night and all that, the, the fishing went really rubbish, even though it was nice and warm. Whereas now that it's steadied out, maybe it'll be a bit better this week. Hmm, we shall see. It's a bit early to be deciding what's going to go on, but getting bites that quick in a 50 pound day, that's, I mean, you'll take that every day. So you can still keep seeing these little single bubbles, like in this little area in front of me. It could be fish or it could just be a bit of gas, but See another one there. I do feel like there's fish in this little area here. So I've not actually plumbed up anywhere to me to me left down the middle. Or I, I checked it, it was a lot shallower than what it is to me right. So I've gone pretty much with two lines to me right down the middle. One one short here for me maggots, and then a long one for potential for pellets. Oh, little indication there. But I may have made a mistake not putting something in around here. That said, the fish might be here because I've plumbed up there and I've just upset them a bit and they've just moved down the canal. There have been a few fish topping in between me and the next lad on 17. There's been a few decent fish top there, proper old F1s. I think they were anyway. That could easily be them giving themselves away that they're in that little area. Mm, not as fast and furious as expected there, is it? Definitely not, but as long as no one's catching, it doesn't matter. It seems that, from what I've just heard, everyone's catching one or two of them little stockies. No one's caught a proper fish yet, even though it's stupidly early. So I think we're doing the right thing, even though we're getting very little in the net weight-wise. It's pointless trying to catch them big fish, because if you, at this time of year, if you try and catch your, your proper fish early, the, the F1s and who knows, maybe even the carp, what you tend to find is that if you go to them and give them a clattering straight on in the match now, it upsets them for later on and they back out your peg a lot, a lot quicker. Whereas if I can be a little bit more patient, just give them maybe an hour and then go and try and catch them. Once they've sort of settled, once they've been upset by a few people and they've found a, a little bit of an area, then I can go to them and start catching them then. And hopefully it'll last a little bit longer. But I need something that move then, I need something to start happening in order for me to not have to move, that's the only thing. Still not bubble down the middle then. So it seems that most people have started across. Yeah, I think nearly everyone on this bank started at least. Bottom of the shelf at the earliest, the lad next to me has just had one there, a lot deeper. Again, it's just a well, it's a bit bigger, it's not a tiny stocky, it's a bit of a bigger one. Yeah, a little bit of a bigger one than what I've had. Slightly, see, that was 8, 10 ounces. If they're that big, I don't mind. So, what am I have to do? I'm going to give it one more little feed with a bit of ground bait. I didn't feed ground bait this cast. I only fed a tiny little pinch of micros. So I'm going to come back, give it one more feed of ground bait, a tiny, tiny little, like a six mil pellet, that was a fish there then, a six mil pellet size lump of ground bait. See if that sparks something to happen in. 
and if not it might be worth putting a little sprinkle of it on and just tapping a few micros in just to get bait falling through the water a bit more regularly just tiny amounts just to see if I can draw them in quickly just a minute nothing seems to be responding to just a lump on the bottom I mean, they're going to need a bit of something happen then they're going to need a bit of bait falling through the water I think again that wasn't a I see the carp spook then. You see that? It's got me very confused. And again, it was only a little stocky, but it's been foul locked. It's pinged off, but it's spooked two carp on the way in then. Or well, definitely one. I think it would look like two. A two proper fish. And on this lake, it can be a case of if you're on carp, you're on the carp. It's definitely this time of year. They'll be very likely all together together so if I'm on them the last thing I want to do is upset the car if they're in the area I'll give this one more go I'm not going to try and attract fish on this now I've changed my mind already I'm just going to give it one more one more lump of micros and I might change the plan already and go a bit deeper and go straight onto our pellets that fast if there's decent fish in me peg, I want to be catching them. It's, so that the big alcat, or not big calf, the, a decent stamp in here, the, what are you going to give me? Four and a half, five pound on average, the carp. So we don't need many bites at all if we're on them big fish. So maybe a selective day is going to be better than a, a targeting lots of bites with little fish day. I say it's hard. I, I would have liked to have a little dob, but. I don't actually know if bread's allowed yet. We're still in October. I think it's end of October bread's allowed here, I think. I don't know, but I, I don't feel that we're ready yet anyway for dobbing. I don't want to dob yet. It's not cold enough to do dobbing. We want to feed. Feed, feed, feed. And get bite. Like that. See, spooked another fish then. There's a lot of fish in this area, definitely. Another one spooked on the same sort of line as that last one did then. And I don't want to annoy the proper fish too quick. If you annoy them, they'll go and they won't come back. They'll find the space. So you want to catch them while they're in front of you. And again, this is just a... I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is, whether that's a, an original or a new one, but... I don't mind catching them. Mm, don't mind catching them. Same again, ground bait. I fed the micros. That one cast I fed micros. I didn't catch one. Well, nothing happened. You know what I mean? As soon as I fed ground bait again, it was an indication straight away. It's crazy how they can do that. So same again. Little tiny pinch of micros. And a little tiny pinch, literally that big. So all it takes a ground bait just for something in the water. I don't even know if it gets down hardly, it's that light and fluffy. So very typical stocky fashion. Just so I was gonna come off them then. So it's still dead early. I was probably too early to be contemplating doing anything else. But as soon as I thought about coming off them, there's load of me peg now. And because I fed ground bait, we can catch them nice and fast because I've not got to feed every go. Yeah, I can just feed every two, maybe three fish. And see, the only thing I would say is that they are too small. I mean, there's no chance of doing a weight off them. No chance of winning a match by catching them. So it's just nice to get bites at the minute. So by feeding that, like I say, it is literally one a chuck. Look at the size of that. That's not even a car. Flip, and I've got a net everything. Look at that. No. They definitely need a, to be of a bit more substance than that one, Rich, don't they? Yes, I'm all up for catching. Catching fish, but that one, that's not even a fish, that's an embryo. It's an embryo. So the, the chap further up got another car. That seems to be the area, doesn't it? A, a chap, about three up. What we what we going for? Peg 18, 20. 
It seems to be where the bigger fish are feeding at the minute, but he just might be doing things better. He might just not be fishing for stockies. So I'm going to catch three more. And if they're still, everyone still stays that big, the size of that one then, which it looks like they are, then we ain't doing that. I mean, they're too small. Unless I'm desperate, I'd catch them in January, but not now. I mean, I'm, I want a day getting bites, but this is just a route to being a busy fool catching them things. It's so all that can be described as busy fool. I was hoping they were going to be the size of that second one. If they were, we'd have caught a mega weight. You could actually catch, I mean, you catch 70, 80 pounds of them. If they were that, that must have been an original, that. Like one of the, one of the stockies from a little while ago, that must have been. So it's just worn a chuck now. It's just in under. So how do they do that? They just find your bait and that's it. Worn a chuck. I hope they're not going to be a pain. I hope they're not going to be on every line. It's just going under and under and under. One's just top down the edge, which is quite interesting. But I'm worried now immediately about feeding too many soft pellets anyway. Because the last thing you want is a peg to get overrun with fish that big. I mean, although the, the carp or the F1s, oh yeah, they are, they're all F1s as well. Um, if they take over your peg, a little fish like that, the big fish don't want to be anywhere near them because they're just a pain. They're just little wacky lunatics that whiz all over the place and don't feed in a nice way. So the big fish don't really like mixing with them. So I think it's took a bit longer, so I've not fed this cast just to try and calm them down a bit. I think it's worth coming off them immediately and just trying to catch a different fish, trying to catch proper fish for a second. Let's try and come back with one. Let's see, chap opposite me's got a proper fish as well, fishing. Avoiding the stockies by the looks. I knew I was gonna hook a bigger fish as soon as I said I'm avoiding the stockies. I know it's not, maybe it's not, maybe it's not. I just wanted to be for a second. No, still a little stocky. It's little bony mouthed pain in the bums, aren't they? They're lovely fishies, but they don't weigh enough. Should we catch one more? So one more. Oh, cause he's got a carp over there. I don't want to scare the carp off me, Peg. And I already feel like I've cost myself a big fish or a decent fish by not starting on our pellets. I think I'd have caught something worth catching by being a bit more patient. I might have only had one bite or two bites, but it would have weighed considerable amount more than what these little things do. See. See, as soon as I fed me floats moving, not bites, but moving. Because they're straight in nailing them loose micros. I shouldn't have fed them loose. I should have had them in a little clump then. Just to get them down a bit quicker, so avoid the liners, but it's me not concentrating that. So they're barely oh no, no, that's the end. I can't do that. Lovely to catch, but no. What is that one? Little fat boy like me, this one. Little fat boy, just like me. Mm. Yes, definitely time for the change in that. I just feel like I'm falling behind straight away and I can't do that. I'm catching the wrong size of fish altogether. When everyone else is catching some great big lads. I'm mucking about catching little baby fish which we don't want to do. Try and do this, I should have done this before that. Fill me pot up. So I'm swapping to my hard pellet line. Yeah, not fed anything. And it's right out the way where I've not bothered, I've not put any bait there, I've just left it alone. I've had no fish swimming through this 
little area. So hopefully we can go in without annoying them. Where are we feeding? We're feeding there, Rich. Right there, wasn't it? So you just sprinkle a few. I've not got to be anywhere near as accurate as I have when I'm um, fishing my micros. So I can spread them over a little bit of a bigger area. Only slightly, probably like six, inch, six inches square. Just to see if anything comes in on that. So I'm feeding a lot less bait. I've mean, probably fed about eight or 10 that time and immediately had a bite and a bigger fish as well, straight away. So he just said, it's not in the mouth, I don't think, but... It's another stocky rich. I mean, I'm the little fish resident. He's wacky, that elastic might be a little bit too light for this, but again, it's foul luck, so I can't really look into it. It is what it is. Oh dear. So it was a bit bigger. It wasn't a tiny one. Yeah, it wasn't a tiny fish that, which is worth paying attention to. Um, I'll dot me float down a little bit. It's a little bit too high. Oh, wrong ones. Wrong ones. It's a foul hooker, that one, but bigger. That looked like, again, the last year's batch of little ones. The ones that are worth catching, do you know what I mean? Anything a pound, I'm happy catching. Ooh. Back in the place. Yeah, that's made me a lot happier looking that, even though we didn't land it. So it's the right size of fish that I want to be catching for. The smaller end of the scale, but still the right type of fish. Get me bait in first and then let me rig just fall in nice. It's dotted down lovely now, just so I can see absolutely everything that goes on. Hopefully these little diddy ones won't be on it quite as quick. So with a bit of luck by feeding their micros there on the, on the original line, it might keep the tiny, tiny fish away for a bit, hopefully. That's the theory, probably a load of rubbish, but that's the plan. So I've gone to me right, because I've got a bit of space that way. So I feel like that's where the fish are gonna gonna be. Maybe uh, maybe I should have gone to me negative line first to me left hand side where I'm least likely to catch just to catch a few before I send them that way. That might have been a better option but so we've gone with I've gone with the right hand side just because people are catching. And we've seen a few that way as well. Not so much where I am now but a bit further down get I hate it when a leaf gets stuck to your float. A bit further down from where I'm fishing, probably another two or three meters, or five or six meters. There's been some proper fish topping there. It's the one area that we've seen some big fish, or decent fish. They've definitely been big F1s or maybe even carp that have been in that area. So he moved me float there, knackered me. Knackered me curve. Yeah, then that's what I'm after with this rig that lovely little slow fall that I get from it. I am hoping to catch a percentage of fish on the settle. As long as I can do that, as long as the leaves aren't too much of a problem, which they shouldn't be. There's not too much debris on the surface just yet. Hopefully we might catch some through the water, but we'll see. I mean, I'm not feeding much bait for them to intercept much through the water, but so maybe later. Maybe later Catty might come into play just to make a bit of noise, just have a bit going through. Maybe even a little sprinkly pot, just to sprinkle an odd one. And so we'll just see, see what mood that they're in. So it is so early to make a decision yet. 
It's weird how that one was so quick on the bait. I'd say it did make a lot of commotion thinking about it when I hooked it. It didn't leave the peg willingly, it went mental. That could be the reason why I'm struggling for a second. It went then, something on the end again, that felt a bit stocky-ish. I've right changed my tune, Mitch, haven't I? I've gone from, oh, I hope there's a load of stockies here, to ugh, ah, horrible little things. It's a bit too small, aren't they? Just a bit too small. Same again, we're getting chopped off with me, second big fish. It's had two fish for 10 pound now. I'm flying for his 50 pound target. Flying. As I'm very much dawdling. It's noticeable they've gone a lot, 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 lot shallower than me as well. They've gone right to the back. So the bloke that I saw further down catch a, a carp. So he's same again on the settle. Bloke that was further down had a carp and him. Yeah, opposite, they've both caught in really, really, really shallow water. Which is quite interesting just to see where they're feeding. I say the rules do go out the window a little bit on this lake because it is so overgrown and so undercut. I do think that they, they often bury themselves right under that bank, the, the bigger fish. So definitely in areas, maybe a bit further down the lake more so, where it's a bit wider. But they definitely live under that bank. Carry on, I don't think I'm going to go back on them little fish now. It's because people are catching too much already for me to compete catching them. I mean, it almost makes too much commotion in your peg as well, catching them. It's, you're hooking them and they're flying all over the place. It's not what you want. It just tends to upset everything. So it definitely spook them. First couple of carp out with pegs. It's actually something knocking the weeds then. Again, what that could be, who knows. Is it an instant win just under the water, Rich? You see it there? That's an instant win, isn't it? Can you see it? Right, so I just had my first proper fish then. The first pound and a half, two pounder on. Again, on our pellets, just that selective one where I can just feed a tiny little bit, that eight or 10 pellets, and just sit and wait for a proper bite. I mean, I'm laying my rigging, fairly often just to see if one has it on the settle but I wouldn't really expect them to do that yet because of the way I'm feeding I mean I'm trying to keep it neat just with me pot to begin with I've not got a lot of bait going through the water but there's still potential to catch a few fish in that way if they want to feed like that what's going on there there's still an odd little stocky coming into me peg even though I swapped to a bit more selective bait I mean they, they do seem to be I'm getting an odd movement as if there's little fish there Little diddy fish, whereas when I get a proper bite, so I've had two proper indications now, I missed one because I was looking back that way somewhere. And the other one's a proper fish. So I definitely feel as if I'm, say, selective and patient. I'll put more weight in my net than if I'm a, a busy lunatic catching them little fish with micros and expanders. So there do seem to be plenty of them little ones about. Everyone's catching a few of them. So apart from the people that are fishing baits that they're not too, not too keen on. I mean, there's a few lads gone straight in on maggots, things like that. They've not caught many fish, but they've caught proper fish. The wind, big gust of wind, that one then. Let's bend it round a bit so I can hold it still. So yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. It's a nice sign that there's still, there are some actual fish feeding. And I do definitely think it's going to be better than expected, maybe slightly. I mean, I don't think it'll, it'll be a contender to win on this lake. Just because if this is good, house bill could be phenomenal with 12 on there. They could actually catch 100 pound on there today, I think. So especially later on when them big boys have a go short. So that could be amazing on there, but that doesn't matter. I mean, I can only do what we can do on this lake and see. The target is to win the lake, hopefully. 
So I'm going to keep at this. I don't feel like I can make anything happen yet. So I've always got a catty in my head to, to think about me sparking an interest, seeing something I'll have a go. But I don't feel like that's necessary just yet, or it's not the way to go just yet. I think it'll spook fish out my peg very quickly if I do that. Instead, just being patient. I mean, if I can put an F1 in my net every 10 to 15 minutes, I'll take that right now. Do you know I mean? First hour or so, if I can catch three or four big fish, big proper stamp fish, then that's, that's on the way, that'll do. Yeah, if I can get a carp in them three or four proper ones before the first hour's up, then I'll have over 10 pounds. I mean, that's technically what I'm after, 10 pound an hour. So it's very few bites to, to achieve target weight. The wind is, it's changed right round. It's right gusty now. Oh, it's horrible. I like that. Yeah, right gusty wind now. See, I've seen a fish in this left hand weed bed as well. I saw actually something moving in that left hand one that's made me think, oh, maybe they could still be there despite it being in between the two of us. They've not necessarily backed off to all the room. They could still be. I mean, it just might be a nice little happy area that you want to be in there. So same again, this is a, it's not a big one like the last F1, but it's a, a worth catching F1. So he's got What's he? He's, he is a 10 ounce, isn't he? I think we've had three 10 ounce ones now. And one decent one. Ooh, you little bugger. Why do they do that, Rich? Why do them little ones like falling off? Because they really do like falling off a lot, don't they? I'm fishing like a little girl with me elastic. Very, very delicate. So, still plodding. I'm getting lots of indications, but I feel like the dreaded stockeroonies have come to find me. I mean, I feel like they're, they're mooching about, so I'm getting lots of indications eating them pellets, but not catching many, which that could be a sign with how big they were. There's a very good chance it's them little diddy ones, and I've just actually had one pull me elastic out as I was laying me rigging. It's like a little ghosty one that Probably about four, five, six ounces, same again, whizzing. I mean, they're not proper fish, them, I don't think. So I'm still really, really unsure what I should be doing. Because it feels like it's nice enough that fish should be eating, like proper fish should be feeding, but whether it's that they're not, and I've just got to get a grip and catch what's available, or whether I'm, I'm fishing in the wrong area, the wrong places in my peg with the wrong baits, where I'm most likely to catch these little fish, which is why I am. Say so a few decent fish have been caught up and down. So you know, a couple of calf get caught, a few decent F1s getting caught. So they're still about, but it's just catching them. They are bit. So I've seen chap opposite me who's had a couple, and I just realised he's actually catching dobbing. I mean, he's had two or three fish and he is dobbing, 100% he's dobbing bread. And he's had a great big in. And then he's gonna, oh no, he's had a great big in, he's gonna cross and had two or three proper F1s dobbing bread. It's crazy, I never thought we'd be doing that just yet. It's definitely happening. Yes, he's not catching many fish, but the proper fish when he gets one. I don't want to do that yet though, when he got none. I'm not a, I like a bit of dobbing when it's necessary in the winter, but not yet. I don't want, I don't want to succumb to not feeding anything just yet. Although it ain't far away at all. See, that float's moving non-stop. Just lifting and dipping, like, you have to find these little diddy ones that they don't actually move off of your bait. They literally just pick it up and it's almost like they just chew it. They don't even move out your swim. You lift up and there's one on, like a crucian in the summer. <laughs> Strange little things, but whether that's what's happening or not over there, I don't know. It's, I could do with either catching a few more stockies or foul looking a couple of big ones if that's what's happening. If they're intercepting it through the water, giving me false bites, they're just bigger fish. But they're not, see, I've up one then. It's, no, it's what I thought, it's just stockies. Another big carp just off the point then. 
That's where they seem to be. All the bigger fish that I'm seeing are just, just off the point up towards the, in the open water. That's where the better fish are definitely hanging at the minute. And so we're plodding catching these. If they're all that big, same again, I wouldn't mind. Very weird colour, very pasty ones, Rich, aren't they? Very strange little things. Not still worth catching, just. Especially in the first period that we're worth sticking a few of them in the net. But what I'm thinking about now already though, is another carp on that point there, and that's definitely where they are. A lot of fish on that point of the island, well out well out my reach, I'm afraid. It's in, in that chap's peg there, but that's where the carp are, I think, today, down there. Yes, that's my prediction once they've a few have been caught. They quickly work out where the where the space is and, and go and settle in it, and that's what they're starting to do now. They're definitely settling in that that area up there with no one in it. So the question now is whether they whether they come back and have a feed when they're ready to feed later on. I mean, I'm in the the best position possible for if that does occur, being on the end. If they if they want to have a feed and they're sat there, at least they come to me first. Hopefully, unless there's a, a bigger stack down the other end, potentially. But yeah, we're in the, the right area for them to come to. So me or the chap opposite. This is a little bit better because he can, he's sort of on the fish already. He's like right on the end of the point already. So he might be able to pick a few off and get ahead before the fish actually feed. But who knows? It's just got it keep ticking along I think I'm not really feeling trying anything else just yet I've, I've got maggots down the middle in my head because I keep seeing so many bubbles occurring down the middle but I don't know if it's right or not so I've upped a, a better one now as well don't know if it's in the mouth or not I was actually looking up there when that went so I don't know if it's another wacky one or Oh, what weird! In the right predicament with elastics today as well. I don't know. If, I don't feel anything's right. I'm, I feel like I'm under gun, but then when I hook one, it feels right. So if I went a bit heavier into the next one up, I think it'd just be a bit too much for the for the delicate up length. I've only got O12 on. I say only. That's me. That's heavy O12 for this sort of thing. I'd, I'd happily swap to O10 if I needed to. I say this elastic would allow me to do it, whereas if I step up to oh, if I step up to 12 to 14, then it's just going to be too much. So it's a decent one, but not in the mouth. This one, but take me time. So it's a part of winter fishing is often foul looking and odd, and you've just got to make sure you take your time and give yourself the best chance of landing them at least. So the odds are stacked against you, but. If you land it, it's like a free one. So a big long landing net's coming as well, really, really handy for, to give you an opportunity and pop up. Ooh, I don't like it when they do that. You can get on it and pop them up quick. There we are, there we go with the, with the weight. We don't need many of them. They're what only target fishes. Don't need many of them big boys for a for a weight, do we? What are they? Two and a half pound, Rich. They add up lovely and quick. I think young lad then just lost a decent fish next to me. That looked like a car, but and again, he's fishing in the deeper water. That pattern's definitely starting to emerge now. In the eye. Think I may be wrong, so I thought what you would call it opposite me was fishing in the dead shallow water. He's not, he was dobbing. So I always caught one over there. That, that's different rules altogether. It doesn't mean they're necessarily going to feed in that shallower water. So the kid next to me's caught a couple of decent fish. Um, so he lost the carp then again in the deeper water. Another one topped on that point there. There's so many fish on that point. Really do hope they come and give us a visit later on. So I've actually got a line that way. I've put a line in 
just where that fizz has come up then down the, down the slope funny enough um yeah i've got one plumbed up that way to fish pellets which is a bit unusual i mean i've got maggots at my hand for if the, the f1's having a rival later on but i've got a long line up there with pellets at like 13 and a bit meters just in case they like they back off i mean they don't want to come close to me and feed because i can still get to them with that way I can still go, I'm not going to go silly, I'm not going to go 14 or 16, I don't think. I want to go sensible so I'm still within, I mean, easy catching distance. I don't want to stretch it when I don't have to. But yeah, that long one, it's pretty much I've got an F1 line or a carp line, depending what they want to do, whether they want to come and have a feed. Or whether they want to hang back like they're doing at the minute, they're just hanging on that point. But I'd say it's still too early to even worry about it. They're always going to have backed off in that first hour at this time of year. So just let them happen. I don't know what we are in now. We're an hour in, probably. An hour-ish in. Again, another big fish. It's now things are starting to starting to happen now. So much better if this is what I think it is. Then the day's definitely the pegs developing. We had an hour, just over an hour. Yeah, little carpy. Now we're flying. So just over an hour, and I reckon that gives us in with the two F1s and with the stockies, I reckon we're on about nine pounds. Which, a nice start that. So how it's been, well look at that. But more importantly, this carp, an hour in, to walk a car is really, really good because it means that they've not completely backed off and legged it. It means that the odd one's willing to sneak in even now. I mean, this early an hour fishing and the, the pain was a visit, that's really, really good. It could just be a one-off, but who knows? Made me very excited, that, though. Very excited, Rich. Very excited. Not Andy excited, but excited. Mm. Still keep seeing these bubbles down the middle, just an odd. Little single blub, 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 blub. Does make me want to like feed it already, but I just think it'd be a mistake. You never catch this early down the middle, not not when it's this hard. Shipping's like dead weird. I hate fishing to me right. Always off being a right hander. It's never nice shipping to your right as it is to your in front of you or to your left. It's a bit shaky and wobbly. Tight to that, let it go down, lovely. Beautiful. So I've just seen the reeds knock right at the back as well then. Don't know if Rich saw that, but there was something happening right at the very, 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 very back. And another big fish, but this one's definitely not in the mouth. Well, I don't want it to do those plough all over me peg when I'm hooking these. And it's foul up. The last thing I want is it to ruin everything by keeping it really low and giving it a bit more pressure than you normally would. I mean, there's less chance of it ploughing through all my lines. I'd rather it came off than wrecked everything. I don't think it's as big. I thought it was a carp when I first looked at that. I don't think it is. It's just a, a wacky stocky in the tail, luckily. It just meant it's not destroyed all my peg. play these foul lookers really, really low. What you tend to do is you get a little look at them and you can get your net in front of them. Mm. Yes, I think this is a lot better than we were planning on it being today. So I'm starting to get quite excited now, in fact, that this could be good. So we're going to continue with these hard pellets. So I'm not going to change much, I'm just going to keep tapping for now. Not going to risk getting a catty out. 
there is no need just yet. And hopefully we'll be able to put another 10 or 15 pound in the net in the next hour or so. Right, as so is often the case with this wintry, rubbishy fishing malarkey. As soon as you think things are happening, they, they change your mind and it just fizzled out. Because it went right, right strange then. I had that little spell where I caught a carp and three proper F1s, you know what I mean? Three two pounders straight away. I thought, right, we're on now. Steady away, steady away, and all that. And just as so you think it's done, they changed again. In that I've gone in, fed again, I've, I've bumped, or I didn't bump a carp, I had a liner off a carp. I think it were a carp. I've, I've whacked it and there's been a big bow wave. I've had a couple of little indications, but I've gone 10 minutes now without without a proper bite, without catching one. So I'm just going to feed it once more, a little bit of bait. And from what I'm seeing, they might need to make a little change. And I don't know which way to go, I'm quite confused. Because I'm getting a few indications as if the fish are a bit shallower, so maybe further back's an option. But at the same time, I think there's much more likelihood of getting consistent bites by going deeper, because I'm still seeing the old bubble about. So I'm a bit torn at the minute what decision to make next. So what I'm gonna do is just give it this one more, one more cast here. See if we catch one. See, so he's just got another one there dobbing. Well, see what it is. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have one more quick go because I seem to I seem to get a response every time I feed. But I miss everything. I mean I feed and I'll miss like two bites straight away. So straight away there, fed again and I don't think it's proper fish doing it. I think it's little stockies whizzing in, getting excited by new bait. And I think it's just little fish whizzing in and having to go. And I don't want to catch them because there's no point. They ain't big enough. So I think the best thing to do, like I say, is just to move lines, just go slightly deeper, come down to the bottom of the shelf. Is it a big F1 or a little carp across dobbing again? Um, yeah, I think the safe thing to do is to go deep to start with. So go further down my peg, go 13 metres to my right. It's that nice little dark bit there. Tap a bit of bait in and see if they're willing to, to sneak up towards me. So yeah, this, this was the least response I've had. I fed then and it wobbled when they first went in, but... No, nothing's happening. It's, you can tell it's going rather than they're just having a little quiet bit as if I've caught a few, moved to that line, caught a couple, felt like they were going to come towards me, but the if actual fact they're not, these fish are backing off and it's just leaving the little silly stockies behind, I think. Again, little indications. Oh, lovely rainbow there, Rich. Look at him. Isn't that pretty? Pretty rainbow. Leaf stuck to me flow. I hate having a leaf stuck to me flow. Same again. It's weird, weird indications, but it's these indications because I'm not looking at anything that have got me so confused as to whether I need to go further back. So I've got a rig to cover it. I've not got a rig for that direction, what I'm in now, that I can go further back on this line, I actually had it over here. I thought I'd put one in that hole there because I, I didn't ever fancy catching at the back, really. So it might be worth plumbing up. Um, further back from where I am now, see if this rig I've got is deep enough to get in there. I think it will be, should be. Very, very similar sort of area. See if there's some fish there. So I think there are my two options. So I think to avoid upsetting things, I think the best way of doing things, see another little indication then. Best way of doing things, I think, is going to be to feed some bait on that deeper line. Just tap in 10 pellets there. Um, plumb up across, get that set. So if I need to go over there, I can go over there. And then just give it 10 or 15 minutes on this deeper bit to see if they settle better in the deeper water or maybe the carp are in the deeper water. 
So right now, I'm lots of things happening, but catching nothing. See, what's this? It's a stocky. I'm so glad I've just hooked that. That's what's given me the little indications. I, I didn't mean that sarcastically then, I promise. But yeah, they're what give me the weird indications. So that's a good thing. Move off that, because it has now got little ones on it. So I'm going to feed some bait long. Plumb up that. And that's my next step, I think. Moving to where the fish are. So my plan at the minute... It ain't looking good. Do you mean I've just plumbed up and I found that shallower water there? See another one just passed me bait then. Um, yeah, I found that shallow water back, so I've got that as an option. And I thought I'd just have a quick go down the middle, and the middle's confusing me a lot now. Because I fed me bait, uh, I fed me bait, I don't know the indication, but it's as if I'm trying to think there's like carp in the area or something. So, I mean, I've not hooked one, I've not not caught one, not, nothing's happened. But just the type of movement I'm getting on my flow, it's not like it's little tiny fish. Do you mean it is like it's proper fish, really, really shallow. I'm, I'm regretting not having a flipping dobbing rig. I really, really am. I'd love to have just had a dob down the middle with bread just to see if that were the way to go. But say that without doubt there's fish in the area. I've gone towards the fish that we're seeing. Say towards that point. That's definitely, definitely where they're they're located. Although the ones that I'm seeing are sort of up the shelf a little bit more. I've gone to the bottom of the shelf with this one, caught a lovely leaf. Um, gone to the bottom of the, sl the slope, just to give myself a different option to where I am. Uh, fishing in front of me at 13 metres. So if I go to the bottom of the slope, just it's another depth option. So I'm just in line with that. Just in line with the end of the island there. Um, yeah, another depth option and I hoped because it's not very deep, even down the middle here, I've only got four foot, four and a bit foot. So I still fancied every chance of the fish being happy to be in that. But the, I can't get a proper bite, I can just get an odd little wobble, an odd little indication. And again, I'm, I'm sat here thinking, what are they? I mean, are they big fish, or better fish higher up in the water? And I'm just not, they're not feeding yet, I'm just seeing fish that are passing through. I don't know if that was a bite then or... Or is it just a case of um, there's an odd stocky down there again, an odd little fish that I'm getting in the case off another great big one on that point and then just flomped out. They're there, they're 100% that is where they're sat. I wish I was one peg further up today, we've been able to, to get to them then, but so they peg it the way they do so there's no clashing. But yeah, I fancy there's a lot of fish down that end of the lake today, a lot of carp. So we've seen a few moving up the bank and then that point, must see 10, 15 fish on that point now. So just hopefully they'll sneak down. So I think it's Phil opposite, but he's catching to that. He's dobbing up the bank. He can reach the bank on that peg, like at the, the end of the lake. And he's just, he's just lost a great big calf. And I think he's just upped another one. Again, just not feeding anything, just flicking some bread out. And it does, it seems that proper winter is well and truly upon us, I think, like the way you've got a fish. Me trying to just be a little bit more selective. I don't think there's a, I don't think it's right. It's definitely not for the first period of the match anyway. It's, it's being ultra negative with bread may have been the option today. This may have been the option, but that said, if I'd have dobbed, I'd have been moaning that I wasn't controlling anything, so who knows. So this middle, now I've got a little bit of bait there. I say it's a line, it's another one in that point of the eye. There's so many fish in that open water up there. This is unbelievable. Um, what's wrong about then? Yeah, at least I've got a bit of bait now at 13 metres in most depths. I mean, I've got this depth covered. There's a little bit of bait there in case I need to drop back on that if they want to feed later. I've got my three foot covered that I can catch a few fish on by the looks. And if I need to, I can go really, really shallow just to see if there's any right in the back. But all the fish I'm seeing, either the ones that are topping on the point, the odd indication, the odd swirling, and just the odd sign, 
it's all in the deep water or deep air water. Nothing's happening. I'm not seeing any signs in that shallow water at the back. All the better fish. Yeah, we fucked one. Let's see what this is. All the better fish I'm seeing are all, I mean, three foot. I mean, bottom of the shell, three foot the area. What are we up here? Have we got a carp or have we got an F1? I think we've just got an F1. Only thing we're fishing all the way over there. I've got to guide them all the way around, but I can put up with that. If it's a six pounder, there we go. Let's see what's on the end of this. It feels like a a proper F1, which that's what we want to catch. So if I can catch him feeding as well, I can control him. There's one top in there, same in that three foot. Those little carp, that's even better. Even better if we catch him carp. Yeah, really good. That's got me excited catching him. It's even better than catching an F1. It's, so he's a baby one, so at least there was mates are there. He's standing with that same stock. He's a little diddy mouth though, but poor bugger. Yeah, that's got me excited again. The emotional roller coaster is on, Rich, innit? What are you doing, you daft little, daft little fish? It's going on one, Rich. It's going on one. Well, so that's that's my plan. So just as I was going to have a a moan to you lot that it wasn't happening. Say so really typical, you just got to give it a bit longer than you you would in the summer. I say so work out what the fish are doing. I so say I've given it my first little sneaky feed on my maggot line. I've cooked in about 30 maggots on this maggot line. Just in on top five for later on. Just in case there's some F1s about and that's what they want to eat. But for now, I think we found a little area maybe I can get a few bites so being in that deeper water the fish move about better as well it's less likely to spook down the middle than they are um, than they are on that shelf so another great big swirl on the point there's so many fish on that point I can't believe it it's so if I could have just been one more peg further along I think it would have been absolutely solid today but it is what it is so, as long as we're putting a few fish in the net in the first half of the match, then I'm really happy. Right, I'm going to try and start it without right or so, which you always do, but now it, it's, it's still happening. I mean, dead typical of a winter one. And by sitting on this long line, I mean, towards when I'm seeing fish, not going stupid, not going to the fish, just going comfy, just going 13 of me. 13 metres of me dolly, what? Oh, 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 that was a carp as well then. We're seeing signs. Do you know what I mean? I'm catching fish. I've had two carp. Two carp and a big F1 for probably four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pound. I'm going to say down the middle. Yeah, by fishing pallets down the middle. Do you know what I mean, a bit unusual for, for here, but as it is, it's selective. Yeah, so they're so used to seeing them. What's going on there? I thought there was a fish in that far back then. There's not, there's a, a moor hen. Um, yeah, just by being really selective, just flicking that really light rig with a four mil pellet about. Saying, so sitting, I'm trying to cupping him fairly accurately and trying to keep him tight. I'm not shaking me pellets all over the place. I'm trying to keep him in, do you know what I mean? Like less than a foot square. So I'm not feeding many, I'm feeding about 10. And just by being really, really patient and waiting, say I'm getting a bite, I'm not getting many of them indications that I was getting on the other lines when I'm feeding. It's as if nothing's intercepting it, it's just going down, sitting on the bottom in a nice pile, and then I'm getting a bite when one comes in. The only worry is how long it is between bites. I mean, at the minute, it's borderline tolerable. I mean, the first two came quite quick, but then that big F1 then, I had to wait a little bit. I, I was probably, I probably sat there for six or seven minutes and I was very, very close to to coming off it thinking that was it. Or giving it a rest rather, not coming off, not leaving it all together. So again, it feels like it could be that sort of day. It could be a, oh, I felt that right up in the air, that one then. Um, it could be a rotation-y type day. 
where I've just got to catch a couple of fish, leave a line, go back to my initial line or go back somewhere else, catch a couple, but not all over the show, you know what I mean? I'm still being careful that I don't spread bait everywhere. I mean, this is me. This is the fourth area that's got bait in me peg. I mean, I've my initial micros and, and ground bait's obviously my first bit that's fed. Hopefully the stockies have stayed there. I've got me me three foot pellets that I caught a few fish on. I've got this one and I've got my maggots. But my maggots, I'm, I hadn't really planned it out with me. Was that a bite then? Don't know. I hadn't really planned it out with me feeding. I forgot about me rollers being a bit awkward here. I'm not liking coming through me, um, coming through me maggot line when I'm playing fish on this one. But I just want to keep them nice and docile and drag them about. They're not being a pain when I'm walking them or anything. They, they, they are leaving my peg lovely. And so they're like dogs on lead, these big fish. They're just wobbling in. But I still don't like pulling fish through a line that's potentially developing. So that said, we'll see. Hopefully there'll still be a few fish there that I've not fed anything to my left, so hopefully these fish can still settle on it. Any fish coming from my left will settle on their maggots. And maybe the F1s will have a, a preference for maggots anyway, so it, it may still have a use. These carp are definitely in the area, and I'm quite happy that I'm ticking over now. And another one's just moved just past me. Probably about three metres past me bait. I've just seen a, something just move. As long as they're still in the area, I'm happy. And I don't think they'll move now, I think. I can't see them going to me left. I think the fish will just stay in this void to me right and keep sneaking in, as long as they don't back off too far so I can't reach them. I think that they're active enough still, with it not being really, really, really cold. They're still a little bit active. <laughs> and then, see, another carp left me peg. Then when I hooked that one, another one went. They're sneaking in ever so slowly. So I've got really, really well for a winter, winter jobby. Where's this one going? It wants to go down the edge. For a winter sort of patient tick over day, I'm really, it couldn't be going any better. So you can't get giddy and try and catch 100 pound. It's not going to happen unless you, you're on a dobbin stack at this time of year. I've just got to take it for realistically what it's worth. You know what I mean, if I can catch 60, 70 pounds today, I'll be made up. I'll go on with a very happy lad. And if it doesn't rain too much, I'll be even happier. <laughs> Keep me bait covered up. i say that one's took. Probably that's the fastest bite I've had my, after catching a fish, this one. It's a nice and quick bite, which is what I'm after, or relatively quick. And if the fish are of this size, then we're all happy. F1, I thought that was going to be a cat, that one. Big old F1s do, don't they? Very large. <laughs> I scooped another one and the one that I put one in the net and scooped another one. Right, so we're changing yet again and I've had that lovely run. Oh, decent-ish run. What have we had? Two car, three F1s. So you know I mean, mega, mega, mega run. And I've just missed three or four indications on this. But I just feel I've got things... I'm not going to say I've got things wrong. What I've set up's wrong, almost. And I definitely wish I had that dobbing rig. Even down this middle, I wish I could flick a dobbing rig just to see if one would have it. Because there's definitely a few about. Um, but aside from that, my edges is I'm flapping about my edges now. In the, the way I was planning on fishing them with like, see, there's another carp there then, with um, soft pellets just off this, off this little point. My kit's wrong, do you know what I mean? I've gone with soft pellets, a little wire float, and no 10 up length. It is no way gonna be right for the fish that are potentially in the area, do you know what I mean? I think I'm better off going with quickly, so I'd say we're only two hours in, so quickly bodging a different rig up. Um, so I can fish maybe corn. I mean, something a bit more selective again, maybe fish some 
micro pellets but with corn over the top, something that I'm going to catch proper fish on. I say, well, I'm not getting loads of bites. The bites are definitely hard to come by to catch a fish. It's proper fish when you get one. I mean, it's either a great big two and a half pound F1 or a little carp or a, a decentish carp, sort of. So I think I'd be silly to go down there all negative and ultra fine and lose a, a proper fish when already I'm thinking that, right, I mean, I know that this is what could potentially happen, so I should cover me bum and, and get it ready now. Not something I like to do, bodging a rig up during the day, but you do what you got to do. So what I might do is I might just drop on these maggots down the middle for a sec, so I can hold that while I make a rig. And just bodge that while I make a, a heavier rig for down the edge. So I've got the option of using that rig in three foot for down the edge as well, but... I don't think I want to go down the hard pellet route, down the middle, down the edge. I, I'm like, I just don't know why, I'm just feeling a bit of corn, I just think it'll be right. It's carp, isn't it? The, I was at Partridge last week and I got beat because I was messing about with little baits instead of fishing nice big selective carpy baits that catch carp. So maybe that's what I should be doing, so. Two more minutes on this, although the sun's just come out, so that might make him go a little bit funny. Let's lay that rig in once more time. One more time. And while that settles, yeah, that's what I'm definitely going to do. I'm going to get another rig sorted really quickly, just with a bit more positive kit and say, and a hook on instead of a band and I think just a better rig for fishing corn down that edge. Oh, let's see, down the edge, down the bank. I, mean, I don't know where I'm going to fish it yet, wherever I'm going to go up the slope a little bit or whether it's worth fishing down I think down's the answer I think fishing a little bit deeper is the answer just because it's where the fish want to be by the looks of it it's where they want to feed I mean I've, I've only hooked carp in the deeper water better than I have up on the slope so I think it's time I think it's time for a quick rest sort of better rig out for the edge and now my me, me pegs, my me, me peg, my plan, my decisions are definitely starting to, to come together a bit better. I mean, I'm not making any daft, daft decisions. I'm just being nice and patient and hopefully just catching an odd fish. So that's what we're doing. Quick abort and get something ready for when the arrival occurs. Well, I think confused is the best word for this, but no, not confused. It's just strange. I really don't know. I was going to make another rig up for, for down there. I've changed my mind. Yeah, I've changed my mind instead. So definitely not being lazy. I've just gone with, I've found from my hard pellet rig that I've got to cross the same depth just down that slope a little tiny bit. And I think that's where I'm going to just see if I have it on that because I think I might have been just getting a bit giddy a bit too quick. Because <laughs> there's not necessarily loads of fish in the area. And since, since I've had that last spell on this, I've only had a couple of perch. I've just had a quick go short on maggots, which was interesting. I mean, I caught a couple of, a couple of stripey ones on that. Yeah, I caught a couple of stripey ones on that, but... There's indications here, and I've had two indications where carp have left me peg. Like a little, little dink and then a bow wave going out my peg, so there's, there's carp are here. But there's 100% carp about in this end of the lake. All I've got to do is hope that they settle. So I've got my edge prepped now, a little bit of bait in that. I'm hoping that this short line's going to kick in. You know, we're right on the halfway stage now. So we need things to kick off quite a bit better because we're a long way behind the the target weight but so like I say there's fish in the area the things are slowly slowly happening and I need to work out whether it's going to be a short line day and I'm going to end up catching on these maggots short if the F1s are feeding because again F1s have been in the area I've caught some half a dozen big massive lovely sexy F1s which are 
exactly what I'd expect to arrive on that line later on. Or whether I need to be a lot more patient. That's the second one that I've seen in that area. So I've got a line plumbed up over there. I've not been over that way yet. That's the second carp I've seen towards that direction. Um, another one there again now. It's crazy. So I need to work out whether I need to be patient or whether I need to wait for an arrival on me, me short maggot. So this is my second go now, long down the middle, bottom of the slope. Yeah, on the flat bit down the middle. Just to see if there's one eating bait off the top there, just a couple of metres past me float. It's actually having a, a gob at a leaf or something. I actually had a bite then, but I was looking at me, looking at me mate. Not daft enough to have that, is he? No. Definitely not daft enough to eat that one. So he's still a long way past where I'm where I'm actually feeding. So, I mean, if I was paying attention then I'd have had a fish then. It was a definite bite. So I think the plan is at the minute. I don't know what the plan is at the minute. I keep deciding what's right and then I change my mind just because it's... I was just saying to Rich, there's not a lot, but there's indications on everything. That's what drives you mad on these sorts of days, isn't it? You feel like everything that you do could go good. And it's so easy to get a flipping wrong and catch nothing. I mean, if you just focus on the wrong area where you're only catching an odd fish and they don't weigh enough, it's getting so easy just tick along and never never push things, it's the last thing I want to do. So I do need to be careful if I'm not putting regular-ish fish in the net then I need to be doing something else. So I'm going to give this another quick 10 minutes now on this. So I've got a bit of bait in the edge now or bottom of the, on the slope down there I've got a bit of bait so I've got lots of areas ready and prepped. Yeah we've now got five areas with bait in my bag which is a hell of a lot for me. But dead typical of, of this now where you've got to cover your depths and just try and make the most of the little runs in little areas of your peg. So I'm annoyed at myself for missing that bite, not paying attention then. I've not had a an indication since. And it is, it seems to be very important to hit that bite after I've fed. And normally I've got a little window, probably about two or three minutes where I get a bite. And I have to make sure I hit that bite. After that, it's tricky to get another proper bite. I can get an odd indication, but it's quite tricky to get another proper bite after that. The first fish that comes onto my feed, they seem quite reluctant to put the reds back down and feed. So I think what I'll do, I'll give this one more minute. If I don't get an indication, I'll come back, feed again. There's another fish there, close to that far bank. Stretch my leg a little bit. Let's come back, feed again. And if I don't catch one, I'm going to have another little go on that three foot line across. To see, so really I've got to be mindful of the time now. Start looking after my short line just with a few maggots on it. Just in case that's where I'm going to end up settling. There's a lot less indications down the middle, a lot less bubbles and signs of fish that there were earlier on. I think most of the fish are, are swimming and sulking at the minute. They've definitely not got their heads down feeding. So if I can just catch like another five or six fish, another fish in that area to me left then. Yeah, another five or six fish. Before arrival time. See something happen then on the way in. Before they feed, that should put me in a, a very good chance of catching a decent weight, but it's easier said than done catching them flipping five fish at the minute. It's horrible. Why can't they just eat? If they act like me, we just catch one a chuck every go. They look weird indication, but not a bite. Not worth striking at. So tricky to understand what to do. 
Yes, it's like they're, they're definitely not shut down yet, like they do in the, in the proper winter. They're active, but not feeding. And that's when, without a doubt for me, the most straight, for him, the most frustrating time in fishing when it's like that. Because they let you know that they're there and it's just it's so difficult to catch. So another one there, another little indication. And hopefully by feeding me pellets there, it's not going to stop them coming and having a proper feed on me bait later on on the maggots. But that may be my me, me biggest error today is putting that line long and stopping the movement of fish sort of ending up short because I've put a line past where that could potentially be the good bit. Let's see, I just didn't get a bite. Feed me bait, odd little wobble, no bite. See, maybe with this sun coming out, everything's just pushed up onto the, onto the slopes a little bit maybe. And that's what I'm going to try now. Move on to that slope, back in three foot again. See if we can catch some carp across. Because this middle line, I think it is now gone. To rest it for that long and then go on it and not get a, not get a run or not catch one fairly quick. So I'd have expected to catch one straight away pretty much after leaving it. Yes, I thought we'd have got one instantly on that, but obviously not. Winged that one then, Rich, didn't I? But I still missed it like a knob. One more go and then I'm going to come off it. I feel like I'm doing nothing. So I've had a quick exploratory go down the edge and I've had one. Which is nice, eh? not a big one, but we've had one, which is the after the tricky bit is getting a bite. So that middle's not responding at all now, although there's definitely fish there because I was getting an odd little bubble coming up, but so I've had to leave that just because I couldn't get a bite. So I've come in the edge where it's probably a foot and a half shallower, but up the slope it's about a foot, a foot and a half shallower, same depth as what I'm trying to fish in across. With... And we've had one, very orangey one. It's a proper one, which is all that matters. As long as it's a proper one, we're happy. We really do need a, an arrival of these later on. I mean, I'm hoping that maggot's the way to go. I've not seen any size, not seen any little bubbles coming up on that yet, which I'd love to see, but hopefully it'll be the one that they arrive on later on. Well, that's a really good sign catching one down the edge, so it's quite steep down there, so I can present it quite accurately and nice by cupping in a few micros and a few fours. I can just hold it there nice. So I still feel I'm doing the right thing, being selective with pellets instead of fishing maggots everywhere and things like that. It's not quite ready for that yet. He starts to catch well down his edge now, feeding as well. So it's time, isn't it? It's time that no dobbing or negative fishing. You've got to try and catch fish now. If you're going to do any good, you need to be nice and positive and make something happen. Don't know if that was a bite then or just me putting it in a bit too far down the slope. So it's very, very steep down there. I've only got a tiny little area that I can get it where my rig's perfect. After that I'm either off bottom or I'm over the depth. So it's a case of like letting my rig settle a bit further out than what my mark is. There we go. And then just edging it in, just keep pulling it in until you just see that pellet like stop sinking the float sort of thing. It goes from being really low to popped up a two or three mil. That's when you know it's perfectly set. If it goes any more than that and you get like five or six mil, then you know you've got a slack line and you're not seeing what's going on. Whereas how it is now, I'm starting to like it. I'm starting to like it a lot. 
a proper nice dunk, proper bite. And all of a sudden we get excited again. And then what he is, what's he gonna be? Big F1 Rich or car? Big F1. Should have had him then. Really should have had him then. Love him now. They are a massive, massive stamp of fish we're catching when we get one. They're all, all the A-teamers. Let's catch them a bit quicker. I think we've got a couple of hours left. Time me on, Richard. Two hours left. Just under. So yeah, a couple of hours. Definitely time to to catch a weight, I reckon we've got 20 something pound, 22, 23 pound now. We need to catch double that in the last two hours to, to put us in with the shout of doing well, I think. So I don't know, a lot's getting caught. He's definitely having a good run of fish there now. He's just come down his edge and had two or three and he'll have very similar weight to what I've got. Foul locked him. Foul locked him and he's caught on a great big branch which isn't productive for the out swim. Does it come off? I think it's loose, isn't it? Yeah, it's loose. As long as that branch is loose, I'm all right. Caught on a big old bulrush or something. I think I upped it and pulled it out my peg at the same time as well, that, whatever that snag is. That's what we want to happen, we don't want to end up with a big obstacle in the peg. I don't know if I've still got it on or... No. It's somewhere in the peg, that. Hopefully it's not tethered to anything. Hopefully it's loose and I'll be all right then. Big sexy one. Now we're catching three for seven pound really, really quick. That's lovely. Lovely, lovely, jubbly, Richard. So edge dwelling it is. So now I might be able to hopefully we've not knackered it by hooking whatever that that was. And we can just keep ticking over with a bit of luck. Didn't cause too much commotion that then, but it did stay in the peg a little bit longer than what I'd have liked. I've not had an indication yet since being back in. I'm getting worried already, but we'll see. Hopefully it'll be all right. I may just need to put a little bit of bait there and rest it if I don't get one in the next two or three minutes. Might be worth going to where that great big and just jumped out there. But yeah, might be worth going back into this depth across. Just while I let this rest a minute, if that if that's upset them. So you want your fish to leave your peg in a lovely, nice, docile manner, not get tethered to the wee bed and then drag them out. I did think that was like game on then, and we were going to catch a proper run down that this side then but it's definitely knackered me up catching on that so i've just had a, a little quick on my second exploratory go on that short line on my short maggot line just while i let this settle down the edge i gave it a little bit of bait and just left it for a second down the edge for five minutes and i've had two bites on that short line i missed one and then i caught a, a little f1 the wrong f1s again another yeah, another little stocky on maggots. But it, it's got potential. I mean, lad next to me has just had one short as well. I don't know. I think his was a stocky as well, to be honest. But that's got signs. And I was hoping to leave it now, go down here, and go straight back into, into fish down the edge after giving them a little rest. But 
as with everything today, the plan ain't working. I mean, I've, I've gone down here thinking, right, another run, and it's not gone. I don't know if it moved a little bit then. You'll probably be able to see that better with me with that flipping telescope lens Rich has got on it. I think something happened then a little bit. It moved a wee bit. Still an odd one down there, but not. There ain't any numbers you can tell you. Just set your trap, sit in, and then clunk, you might get a bite. It. And I hate fishing, or oh, not hate fishing like that. It's so tricky fishing like that when you, you your whole catch rate depends on how fast the next fish comes into the peg. I mean, it can easily be a little bit too long and not be good enough, but. So attracting fish today, trying to make some noise, trying to shake some bait and whatever else. It's just not the way to go at all. They're not responding to noise one little bit. They do like a bit of bait going through the water, but it tends to, tends to create problems rather than get me bites every time I try and I mean, rattle a bit in with me pot or chucking or pinging, whatever. It tends to draw fish in, but I can't get a flipping bite as a result of it. So just setting the trap is definitely the, the most productive for actually getting a bite. So I've gone in here again expecting it to be an instant and it hasn't gone. So the longer you've, you wait after that feed going in as well, once I put my bot in, oh, there's a carp just moved then, but again, just shallow down the middle. Um, yeah, the longer it is after you're fed, the less chance you seem to have of getting a bite. And if they don't respond within two or three minutes, you don't get a bite, or if you do, you foul up one like I just don't know. Mm, it feels like a proper fish, but unlikely to be in the mouth, I'm afraid. There's no good, I want consistent bites at this time. It's all right, foul looking the odd one early on when they're not settled. But now they should be beautiful and settled, not scatty. So it's just how it is now. Need to get it away from that far bank. There he is in the middle. He is 100% far up, I'd say. Oh, he's there. Let's feed that one. whizzing all over the place, spooking everything. And that's, I had fed a little bit of bait on me three quarter line. See, that must have just spooked half a dozen carp then, easy. I mean, lots of bow waves going all over the place. But because that's done that, there's pretty much zero chance of me getting a bite now. Is that snagged? No. Zero chance of me getting a bite across. I mean, unless I go over there to the right. That might be an option. It might be worth going that way this time and see if I see if I can nick one towards where I've just seen that F1 top. It's a big fish this. Might be worth just having a shout at myself and taking my time with this and making sure we land it. Maybe. Let's take our time and see if I can get it in. Hopefully, I feel sorry for us and we'll, we'll get him. So I'm just standing up like a bit of a weirdo, just for a sec. Just so I can clock this weed bed. Oh, has he just come off? Oh, cheers for that. So I can clock this weed bed to me. To me left hand side. It just felt like there were fish there then. Just like looking at it, it just looked a bit dark and a bit. Just as if there were some fish. Almost like shallow in the weeds, as if they were sitting there. But I don't know, it's an odd one. I don't know what to think about that. I just feel like there was some fish in that area, and when I stood up, as if I could see an odd little dark shape, as if there was some fish over there. But that one's gone anyway, that's a six pound I could have had, but didn't.
So I'm going to go back down that edge. And if it doesn't go under quick, me and Richard are going to the pub. No, choking aside now. I'm going to keep plugging away. I don't think I'm going to make any big changes now. I think we're, we're done now. It is what it is. But we'll keep plodding away and see if I can have a little run somewhere with a bit of luck. So randomly, so we've got an hour and 20 left. And my head's definitely... It's, it's driving me mad. The fish, I ate fish. Because I honestly believe when I stood up then, I stood up before just to look at what that last fish was doing. I'm sure there were fish over there to my left. I mean, like sat in the reeds, just mooching about there. I'm sure I could see one as I was sat there, as I was stood up. And it's made me like want to have a little bit of a dob. Just because if they're, if they're sat there and the big fish, I could easily nip in there now and pick off a couple of big ones really, really quick. So I'm just quickly, I've just sacrificed me, me thingy rig. My 410 rig that I'd had for a cross. And I've just swapped it for, I've booked all my shot under my float. And what I'm going to do, I think I'll put an 18 or a 16 on. I don't know, but it'll do anyway. Um, what I'm going to do is just have a little dob with some maggots. Do you know what I mean? I've set it really, really shallow. And I'm just going to have a quick dob, see if I can find a couple. If there's any loitering about. So I've had a little run down the edge, put a couple more. So that's ticking over down the edge now as far as I'm concerned. That's not too bad. All I need to do is catch a couple of fish before I settle for the last hour. So we're getting close now. Then we've got an hour and 20. Just have a little look how that looks. That looks neat. Not too much bristle sticking out, but it looks neat still. No, that's actually nice for suspending my bait. So I'm going to go in really, really, really shallow. Really shallow. And just poking in these weeds for a second and just see if they are fish that are hanging about. So it just feels like there's some. Maybe some carp around here. Might be completely wrong, but I need to get it out of my head. I mean, it's bothering me that I think there's a load of fish up there and I've ignored them and not caught them all day. So I thought we'd just go with a dob. I've probably done it at the worst possible time when the rain decides it's going to come down. What? I'm going straight away. Let's see what that is. If that's a, an eight pounder, then Jamie's not going to be a happy boy. Let's see, he's a cat, like a decent one. Woosa. Still a good sign. Keep me rag, don't lose it, because there might be some fish to be caught. Shows just felt like there was a few there, right in that little little bit. Just felt like there was a a carpy or something to be caught. I think that was a carp, not a big one, but I think it was a couple of pounder. I say this used to be pretty much the best dobbing lake on the planet years and years and years ago, probably about 10 years ago. But they've seen it a lot of carp in here and there's not as many carp as there used to be. But I just didn't think it'd be right for it yet. I thought it'd be a bit too, still a little bit too mild for them to be balled up. But maybe not. Another indication then. Could it be that I've mucked up a mega dobbing peg by not dobbing? Maybe. 
Maybe. <laughs> so we'll have a look. I need to catch quite quickly on this to make it worthwhile, or they need to be quite big fish for it to be worthwhile. So I'm not going to muck about doing this if I'm only going to catch a stocky or a little fish when I do it. So it's definitely not worth the worth the hassle. I've done it at the, the worst possible time I could have had a dob, I've done this as well. Right when the right when the light's gone and the fish are gonna drop down a bit. I couldn't have done it at the worst time. I should have been doing this an hour ago I should have tried this. Wasn't even watching then, and that one went. What is it? I've got to play dodge the stick. I think they're just F1s. I think this is the same as whatever I've just lost. I think they're just F1s. I don't think they're big creatures. It's just a. Unfortunately, with the it going, a big percentage of the F1s are going a bit dormant. Oh, that's lovely, Rich. Lovely. Back in that same hole again. I'll just give it one go. I'll have a go here, give it another minute or two here, see if we catch one. And if not, we might have to go down the peg and have a little look. How can they fight so hard when the ones down the middle came in like they were half dead? What? Yeah? It's mental. He's only a little one, he's only a two and a half pounder. Mental. So at this point, I'm ready to sell me fishing gear. So whoever's the highest bidder on it, right at this point, gets the lot. <laughs> no, Joking aside, they're doing me head in. It's frother, doing me flipping head in, in the why I haven't set it. I didn't even think Dobbin would be close to, to a caring just yet. But it appears that it is. I mean, I've definitely cost myself who knows how many fish by not dobbing today. Earlier on, I could have seen another big lad there like, in that same place all the time. Um, by not dobbing to start with when them fish have been about in the right conditions. So I could have caught, who knows, you know I mean? There might have been, there might have been able to push it. There might have been 80, 90 pound here, maybe. Unfortunately, I've left it a little bit late. And I've just got to catch what I can now. So it's the complete wrong time to be doing it. Never a fan of dobbing at the end of the match because I believe that most of the fish by then are coming to feed. But we've still got that option. I think I've still got, what have I got, Rich? An hour left? Just under? You got an hour? Got an hour. Hour to go. So I've still got time to catch feeding fish. I mean, on a little spell that like I've just had dobbing, catching. What have I caught? I've only had loads. I've had Two carp and an F1, haven't I? Yeah, two carp and an F1, and we lost the carp here as well. Um, I say that's probably put me 35, 40 pound now. So getting a lot better, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm very close to that 50 pound with the hour to go, the hopefully the best bit to go when I'm going to catch a few fish. So the odd fish now starting to get caught on that short line. So chap opposite's caught a few, young lad next to me's caught a couple. I mean, they're showing signs, I'm getting an odd bubble over mine, so there's definitely an odd fish thinking about it. So with a bit of luck, I'll be able to nick one more quick one on this, maybe. 
Maybe not. I might just come off it straight away now. I'm going to get one more go up that way. Um, yeah, one more fish on this potentially. And then, naff the dobbin off, come down this edge and just sit down the edge and on my short line and try and work out which is going to be the best out of the two. I think my edge is probably going to be the most most consistent up to now. I've caught some fish down the edge with us. On my short line, I'm, I think I've only had one so far. It just doesn't feel it doesn't feel right. No one's bagging on it. I mean, maybe them F1s are going to be just just out the deeper water today. So that's not going to go there. We've had no indications there this time. No, let's come off that. Let's give it one quick go to our. Let's give it a quick go in here. Have another go in there. Let's have one quick dib dib dob dob at the back. Let's in that shallow bit. That 30, 40 seconds in there. If we get a bite, great. If not, I want a quick go long where I've just hooked that big in. And if I don't catch one, then that's it. I'm going to probably not put this rig down and not pick it up again. And hopefully try and catch some fish properly by feeding. But I can't stress how much of a window I must have missed when that sun was out before. And I thought I saw some fish, I should have been straight on it then. I should have whizzed Dobbin rig up straight away, straight over there and say we really caught a few fish. Looking back now, the signs have been there all day, just seeing the odd fish, the odd reed knocking. Do you know I mean the odd carp just turning and moving and you can just tell that they're there. And I've definitely made an error not catching them with the owl, getting some bread out or I mean, catching them on maggots seems to be not bad. I mean, I've never really, never really been a fan of dobbing maggots, but it doesn't seem bad. We're getting indications on it. So nothing fancy with it. We're just simply poking a rig into the far bank that's set about a foot and a half deep. And if there's one there, the nail in it, there's an F1 topping down the middle then. Right in that shallow water, just see. I wasn't even watching then and that went. Had <laughs> it? Were you like, you can do anything? What's he doing? Don't have this issues with Andy, Andy's on it. See so how many spook then as well when I've hooked it? So there must have been about seven or eight fish in that little area then. <laughs> that must have literally just settled and gone dum! Instantly did it. I'm dicking about thinking about taking sections off, it's gone. There's a car, isn't it? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Mm. So, not going to go back on that. He's there for in a minute. I'm going to have a quick go down this edge. So I think that's me. The best chance of catching a feeding. Quick go on the edge. Let's see what happens from there. I'd say dobbing, I'm, I'm not going to naff dobbing off altogether yet. Still a chance of a, another carp or two, but you'll see. Going down this edge with pallets first and see if I can get a, a quick run. So there's not many indications dobbing their maggots. There's a calf long down the edge then. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, there's not many indications dobbing their maggots, so let's say could easy not go again. Quite easily not go again, but so if you can find them, they're worth it. What are they, four pounds a piece? May be some edge dwelling dobbing potential if I can go really long, but I'm not feeling that. There's one in that open water there. I'm not going to be I'm still not seeing many signs at all on that short maggot one. It's just surprising. By now, I'd have thought there'd have been quite a lot of 
you know what I mean? They've been pimping on that by now, definitely, and then it's just not. Yeah, they're definitely just not. I don't know if one had a little peck at this on the way in then, or whether I just nicked on a snag on the way in. Something happened then, definitely. He had it, what is he? he foot one or corpse? See, this is the thing, and even on this line, oh, they are they're pimping a little bit then on me. Let's take him right round. Pimping a little bit on that line then. Just saw a couple of little bubbles come up. And he is a lovely F1. I don't know if them bubbles are fresh or... Oh yeah, that one was then. One's just came up then. That's where they're going in a minute. I'm going to give that one more quick one down the edge. And I'm going to have a go on that because I can really clatter them on that if, they, if that's where they arrive. Then there's potential for a mega finish on that. Yes, potentially if they arrive there. We'll see. If not, I've got. I'm happy now because I've got options to fall back on. I've got sort of three areas producing bites. I mean, two feeding areas and then dangling their maggots. So if my short line doesn't kick in, at least I've got my edge and, and another option. Which is like this time of year, the more areas that you can have chucking up an odd bite, the better. I don't know if I've messed up a little bit on this edge, whether I should have just come in a little tiny bit closer, it was a little bit flatter, a bit closer, whether that would have been a bit better or not, don't know. F1 then. Oh, it's a big fish just moved down the middle there then. See, there's such little buggers, they just come to feed now. I mean, they've been there all day, just hanging about in that open water a bit, jumping out, letting me know how useless I am. And now they all come and just say, right, mate, we have been here all day. We just weren't eating your bait. I wonder where they all come from. I wonder if they're in your peg all the time and they just get active or they just go and find the space and sit in it and laugh at you all day long. Perfect timing, that one then. Nail one, try and ship him in without upsetting these ones. Maybe a stocky, I think. I guess only a little one. So quickly, bin that edge off. So I've caught wrong fish on that, that little stocky, I don't want to catch them. I need to have a little click on these maggots, just see if anything's settled on them. I'm not, nothing conclusive has been going on, not, not many little, little pimpy bubbles and things like that let me know that they're there, other than a couple of fish topping. And they've topped just off the backside of me bait, but... So I've just got to give it now, two minutes I'm going to give it. So I've not fed much, I'm not feeding by hand when I go on it. I'm feeding, um, feeding by cup. I've just put 10 or 15 in with a cup. Just because there's not been many fish in it when I've gone on it. There's, there's no vermin, there's no little fish. It's an indication then. Yeah, there's no little fish. So it's pointless putting loads of bait in because, I mean, there's nothing there eating it. And if the F1s do arrive, the last thing I want is a pint of maggots on the bottom. Just by teasing them, just by having a little bit of bait falling through the water, trying to get their attention. Hopefully I'll catch you. A quicker one on it. Here we go. Oh, I didn't like that. Didn't want to bump on then. Really didn't want to bump on. Let's cup in once more. Didn't like doing that. It was an F1 as well, that. But there's so many fish topping in that area over there now. Must have seen 20 fish top there in the last 10 minutes. There's a hell of a lot of fish moving about there. 
So towards that, again, towards the point where they come a little bit closer to me, not, not close enough to reach him, there's another one. Yeah, not close enough to reach him, still 20, 25 metres away from me. There's one top in there then, but that was an F1. But there's everything's just become alive in the last half hour. So much more activity with a loony F1, they're just stockies in. There's a lot of fish about now. But still not eating. Yeah, they say they just let you know how useless you are at this time of year. So often you you get a lot of fish topping and they can be so tricky to catch, they just they're just not eating. Just still not eating. It's been very difficult to get indications. Another same little area there, another F1 top. See, this time of year, the, the things that you see that usually produce a fish during the summer, you see that sort of thing and you can respond to it and you go and catch. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do this time of year. Little fish everywhere and not a lot going in the net. We finally upped one on that, but I don't know, we'll see. See what stamp it is first. But it's gone a bit mental when I've upped it. So we'll see what stamp it is. It feels like a proper one. And it might feed it and leave it just for a little bit longer. It's not quite ready yet. Tell you what, it might even be a collar in the car. A great big F1 it's going to be, in it? It's just a Colossus F1. Yeah, they're responding to it, they're, they're coming in, but yeah, I am going to give it one quick, more, another go Dobbin. Feed this for two or three more minutes and come back on it, or five more minutes and come back on it and hopefully get a run. So that maggot line's all about time and getting it right. So if I go on it now, I may get another, Ooh. but then I might upset it. Whereas if I can feed it just for a little bit longer, I might get a much better end on it. I might catch five or six in that last little period rather than two or three. So I'm just going to cup in a couple of... Oh, see, they just pimped on that again straight away. Oh, what am I doing, Rich? Should I be on it? I'm going to give it two minutes dobbing and that is it. If I haven't had a bite within two minutes, I'm going to count to 100 in my head, 120 in my head, because that's two minutes. And then I'm coming off it. It's a very, very quick look. I don't want to be wasting time on this if they're feeding. Very, very, very quick. And if I keep seeing them bubbles, I might be off it even faster if another one, another couple come up in a second. They keep fizzing. Take Rich out. Let's go to that sexy bit where we just had one in it. That was the, the fastest bite in the world when I wasn't watching. How far in did I go? I went about there, didn't go that far. Oh no, oh no. I'm gonna do that. I think this wind's telling me stop being a spanner and stay on that short line, isn't it? It's just after you've nicked a cow. So. They always do that, like, they're not like twisty there then. They always used to do that in here, they're exciting, it's like... Got last 15 minutes. I don't know whether to say it's gone all right or not. I don't know how it's flipping gone. Been just weird, hasn't it? I've never settled, but that's just how it is now. But 
my plan of my match hasn't been good, but that's just through not knowing. That's just through not being it. Be, being here, my first match I've been here this winter sort of thing, and I've not known what how it is at the minute. Do you know what I mean? I didn't realise it was shut down quite as much as it is. I thought it would be a little bit better just going by venues I've been coaching at, Erinbrook and Partridge. But so they've obviously had a lot of rain and a lot of pressure down here, and they're in, not winter mode, but they're in the bar. They're, they're in late October, November mode. But now, so it's, the last couple of hours have been a lot better. That We've settled a lot. I've just caught an odd fish down that edge. That's been steady, but not wonderful. So my short line's never really kicked in and then them few dobbers have really, they've really helped me to be fair. Do you know what I mean? Them dobbers have probably put 10, 12, 15 pounds on my weight, which, do you know what I mean? A massive little thing that just to, to poke me hopefully ahead, whether they have or not, I don't know. The young lad next to me is catching really, really well on maggots down the middle now. Phil's not catching opposite, he's stopped catching, but yeah, it's a, I think I could have done things a little bit better. So we've got one there down the middle now. There's an odd fish now to be caught short as the as there nearly always is. I mean they, they generally rock up on this line now and hopefully if I concentrate on this, I'm not gonna come off this now, I don't think. Unless I go like five minutes without a bite, but I don't know if this is in the mouth. Let's net him quick before he oh I didn't want to do that. Just under the chin, this one, so I really don't want to pull too hard. But yeah, I think just settling short now, I'll hopefully put, if I can catch three more, four more maybe, it'll be a fairly decent finish, but so as for how the day's gone, very typical F1E winter session where you have just got to scrape your way all through the day waiting for it to slowly get better and better and better. Very similar to the Western Pulsey one that we filmed yeah, a couple back. So it's been a quite a similar day to that, other than obviously today we can fish with more selective bait and give us a chance at catching some, or well, we have caught a few proper fish earlier on. So what weight we've got, I'm not gonna clue. I'd like to think I have got me, or oh, very close to me, 40, 50 pound. I mean, yeah, I think with an hour to go, I reckon I had 40 pound, 35 pound. Yeah, that sort of gang. And whatever's in this last net is with 55 minutes to go, I started this last net. So whatever that weighs, we'll see. So now, all of a sudden it's different indications now. Whereas before it was just sitting, sitting, sitting an odd little. Now it's the more active there's fish there now, you can tell. So I think I've made an error not concentrating and not feeding this a bit more regularly a bit earlier on. So there's a chance of possibly catching a few fish on this. A bit nicer if I'd have looked after this line and not skiffed about with this and the edge and, and whatever else. There were definitely some fish to be caught down the middle on maggots, but not loads. So I wouldn't say I've made any massive mistakes today other than my timing being a little bit out and not having a dobbin rig. That's been the, the huge error in my ways today to begin with. Definitely thinking that they'd eat pellets instead of wanting to be dobbed was definitely me. the downfall, I reckon. So, I don't know how much difference it would have made, but I'd, I dare say it was potentially, yeah, a framer even. So it could have maybe been that good. Little stuff, big stocky, that one. It's a big stock, you don't mind if they'd have all been that big, it'd have been a nice day. If we'd have stayed on them micros and expanders, if they'd have all been that big. So I'm not throwing any bait on this now, I'm just cupping. So because I'm not getting loads and loads of indications, and the wind's in my face, so it's quite tricky to, to group nice and tight. So the fish seem to be staying in my peg, I'm not needing to to attract too many now, and I don't want them coming off bottom as they're so susceptible to do if I start loose feeding bait. So instead, just by cupping, so maybe throw a few by hand when, when I've hooked a fish, if the wind allows, but other than that, 
So I'd rather just cup them, keep them neat and get a bite a bit quicker if I can. So we've gone in there, nothing's, there's not loads of signs. There's not, definitely not millions of fish on this short line, just an odd one. So they've just not been, the, other than one, they've not been the great big massive four pound stamp that I was really hoping for. They've been quite small really. Yeah, on the maggot line anyway, they've been fairly small. Oh, I always didn't want to miss that. They're still topping in that same spot. Look, I must have seen 50 to 70 fish topping that same spot all day today. So they've just not come to come to the feed, they've just stayed there. If they're in hide away from the angler mode. So with no one being sat at that end of the lake at, on this bank anyway, they've just sat in that void and say so nothing you can do. If there'd have been an angler there, I think it'd have been very different. They might have either, someone may have emptied it or they might have pushed the fish down here or it may have even pushed them all the way to the top end. It can be a bit moody in this, this area of the lake in the winter, with it being the narrowest bit, say here and opposite, they can easily vacate and you catch nothing up this end. But so today we got away with it, both through it not being too cold and also a little bit more room than normal. So drop that margin line now, that's not been, after catching that last stocky on it, that may well have kicked in. That might've been a mistake not staying down there and seeing if that turned into something instead of focusing on this, but it just felt the edges, although they felt like there were more fish there, it felt fiddly. Like there was a bit of a, something on the bottom where it was a bit messy. And I had to have my rig perfect to get a bite. Whereas here, there's more chance of a, of a proper arrival. Is that a calf? Yeah, there's much more chance of a proper arrival rather than catch a couple and then it goes funny like that edge is. I think that's fouled off. I thought it was a great big one for a second then, but it's a proper lovely bite that as well. I might have thought that was in the mouth. In the wing. It's in the wing. Still a lovely, lovely size. Don't mind catching them all day. See, there's one there now, a nice little fizz just coming towards me. Just coming towards me, float. Hopefully we get one more proper bite. That might even be a carp, that looks. Proper fizzy. See if we can tempt him into having a go. Oh yes, lovely. That looked good. That looked beautiful on camera raw. Young and bagging next to me, Rich. I am. Yeah, has been. Seconds to go. Come on, beautiful fishies. Eat those lovely wriggly maggots one last time. Should have had one more then, being lazy. But it is what it is. So, yet another live match is all done. And it's gone weird, but I'm going to catch up in a minute. We're waiting because I think the, the buggies are, are quickly upon us. And I'll have a quick refresh once I know what I've caught and, and now we've done. But yeah, quite a confusing match, but still, I really, really enjoyed that one. Hopefully you lot did too. Isn't it? Yeah. Jump some on top of them. Yeah, you can do Go on, mate. Oh. Who's that? Phil? Yeah. yeah, he's done, mate, yeah. He's gone. Is that all right? <laughs> you want me to get out your way while you tip them back, and Keep 
but just very very much just i think right so the way it's worked out it's been a, a little bit better than expected and i've definitely had a touch of luck and i've managed to win the match i mean it's fished a lot well different than what i expected so house pool which that's where i wanted i mean this morning i really fancied the draw on house i thought that would be the best it's fished really really poorly unfortunately they've not had a, a bit much of a chew on there i think 47 pounds one house pool um top pool i think there were two 70 pound weights on there and so we've been lucky we've had 83 pound I what was next on me like? I think £70 was next on Club Pool as well. So I've definitely got away with it. I'm not saying I fished a good match for one second today, as I hope you lot will agree. I've been, say, quite scatty and quite... Just because I've not been here, that's what I'm going to blame it down to. Not in tune with the mood that everywhere is at the minute, because it's all fine and down. But hopefully, let's say, as, as usual, it's been a good example of, say, fishing at this time of year. Very typical of Tunnel Barn in particular. And many, many snake legs stuck with F1s and a few cab that they behave in such a similar way at this time of year in that you've got to treat it so delicately for such a long time and do as many things as you possibly can without spoiling your pegs to try and work out what they're doing so when they do arrive at the end i mean you, you've sort of read the water in the best possible way you can so you know that you're doing the right thing at the right time when they when they finally do have a feed so for me today definitely if i look back on it not dobbing was i mean mega mega obvious i think potentially if i'm completely honest 90 100 pound may have been doable if i'd have had that dobbin rig set up from the start who knows i mean ideally i said to rich maybe a dobbin day then come on to pellet and then maggot short that should have been my day but say it's that's what we always want to do is look back on your day and think how could i improve things i mean that's how we we all improve as anglers even i mean the likes of myself and whoever you've always got to focus on what you've done and think well i should have done this really and hopefully when I'm back in a couple of weeks for the Tunnel Bar Masters, I'll be able to fix that. But oh, hopefully you've all, all enjoyed that. So have a brilliant Christmas. We'll have a few videos coming through me and Andy just to keep you entertained while you, you sat there eating your Christmas dinners. But yeah, so we'll be back for a uh, live match very, very shortly. Same again, back in, back in January, where I think we're going to catch some silvers. So that's all for this time, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Hello, you lovely lot. So we just want to take a couple of minutes out just to go through channel memberships with you. So you get two basic packages. Well, you get a basic package, and you get an all-access one where you we get do. access to everything in your wide world. We do you, two options, don't we? And basically what you get, if you've not seen the, the chaos that we create all over the place... How dare they not, though? Is Aside from the stuff that we do on YouTube, we also do, say, the paid-for package that includes... We do two rates, as you said, we do the basic rate and the all-in access. Yep. And the basic rate, you get a match every single month with me or this chap, where we go out and we go we go next level, which we've actually got to do a bit of today. Um, yeah, we go next level on a match. Yep. Talk about a match. Well, some go next level, you know what I mean? Some have white trains on and go next next level, next, don't you? Next, next level. But we're nearly there. That, but also you get a Q&A with us every month when you can ask us pretty much whatever you want while I drink water and you drink. I have lots of beer. Lots of beer, yeah. It gets a bit out of hand, a bit rowdy. But anyway, yes, you've got that. And then we've also, with that in fact as well, you get access to all of the previous stuff that we've done. So matches yes, from day one, videos. which were, you've got over 12 months now, haven't you? 24. 24? Has it? We've done that long. The CEO has just confirmed 24. Have we done that many years. matches? Have we done Flipping, that many? Yeah. I bet it is, you know. So, yeah, you've got many, many, many matches to go through. Some good ones as well. But there's anyway. Lo there's lots of good ones. And then you've also got the all-in package, like we said, which includes everything that you get within the basic pack package, but also you get all of Rich's stuff that he did with all-in. Uh, all so that's lots of matches with the likes of Dez Ship, um, Matt Godfrey. Matt Godfrey. Done there, you've done loads, haven't you? You've done some right good ones. I like Matt's one the best. That's worth watching, Matt Godfrey's one. Uh, and as well as that, you get all the access stuff that you've had with the with basic the package. And you even get all the technical stuff that we did. Through Vimeo, years and years. When we first yeah. ever started the old wide world ever, like 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 and East, whenever Beast and East was. That's when <laughs> no, we started. 20, I'm going to say 2017, 2018, 2018, 2018. Something like that. Go for that, but you get all that stuff. So yeah, lots, Lo lots of things to do. And we have some massive, massive big plans for this year. The future plans is like next level this year, Jay, isn't it? We're doing something a little bit different to give you lot as much as you can possibly get for your money. We're going to get lots of other people involved doing lots of feature type things, live matches off other people yeah, that are yeah. a bit better than us at doing certain things, which is most people that are doing different things. So I'm just going to get replaced basically, aren't I? So pretty much everyone's better. Slowly and slowly. All right, Jay. Subtly. No subtlety about it. <laughs> Never ever. But anyway, yes, so that is all about what we do. If you haven't, have a look. I mean, you enjoy what you watch.